and I'm going to let her share because you all, this fall, we're going to be a Caneo campus. She's the president of that Caneo campus. We're excited. I'm telling you, that means some big things is going to happen here. So I want you to share with them just a few things about that. Amen. Amen. So how many folks are in the house that love school? So you may be thinking, my goodness, school. I don't want to go to school. Guys, let me tell you something. Now more than ever on this earth right now, the body of Christ has got to be prepared, equipped, and ready to give an answer for the hope that lies on the inside of you. And you may be saying, well, we, you know, we're in revival right now. We've got this. We, we know what's going on. We know what we're doing. We've got this. The Lord is looking for a house that is not only prepared in the spirit, but is also prepared in truth. He said there's coming a day where you'll worship in spirit and in truth. And as you are carriers of God's glory and you're carriers of revival, there'll be more and more opportunities for you to minister, but there's also going to be more and more opportunities for you to be posed with questions. And you need to be able to give a scriptural, intelligent answer for the hope that lies on the inside of you. Listen, it's not, it's not good enough any longer to say, well, I just believe in God. First thing we're going to say to you is, which God? You have to, in this day and time, say, Jesus. You have to say that. You have to identify Jesus, the Son of God, is the healer. Jesus, the Son of God, is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. You have to be able to give an answer for the hope that lies on the inside of you because in this culture, listen, they're coming to you to find Him. All those folks at your workplace and in your family that make fun of you and gouge at you and talk behind your back, listen, when they're sick or they're in trouble or something's going down, they're coming to find you for an answer. They're coming to find you to pray for them, and they want to know what is all this joy on the inside of you that when you're going through something, you're not jumping off a cliff, you're not cutting yourself, you're not drinking it away, amen? You go to the hope of glory. And so I said all that to say he's looking for a house to carry his presence and to carry his glory. But you've got to be strong in spirit and in truth. And so Canal Ministry Training Center is all about that. I make no apologies whatsoever in saying that our program is academic. It's academic. It is Christianity 101. You're going to lay groundwork. Yes, you are going to survey the New Testament. You're going to find out why does it matter who was in power in the days of Jesus? Why does it matter that I know or don't know Roman culture? I don't know anything about Jewish culture. Did you know that Jesus was a rabbi? Do you know why that matters? Well, I'm not Jewish. Yes, you are. You have Jewish roots. Do you understand that? And as Gentiles, we don't understand the intensity of that. Why did Jesus say the things that he said, the weird things that he said? Why did he teach in parables? Well, a lot of times Jesus would speak in Hebrew idioms. What does that mean? Well, come to Canaan and you'll find out. Amen. Pastor Todd taught last night on the importance of water and baptism, and he used uh, the stories about Jesus spitting. Who was here last night? spitting in the clay and putting the spittle on the man's eyes, so forth and so on. And a lot of times, many of us were raised hearing, well, Jesus can do what he wants to do. Any method he chooses to heal, he can use that. No, everything that he did was intentional. He had a reason for everything that he did, and he insinuated it last night. You see, the Hebrews back in his day, in their traditions and in their mind's eye, they believed that the firstborn son, the legitimate firstborn son, had power, healing power and healing element in the spittle. 
Well, if you, that was in John 9 when he did that miracle. If you go back one chapter, and there's a whole dialogue between him and the religious leaders about what? About his legitimacy. They say, our father is Abraham. We weren't born illegitimately. So they were calling him an illegitimate son. In the very next chapter, when he had the opportunity to perform, I hate to even say the word perform, but do a miracle, he chose to use spittle to prove to them that I am a firstborn son. Because he knew what they were thinking. He knew what they were thinking. And so a lot of times we've been taught things and we've said things because they preach good and they made sense to us, but there's a reason behind everything that he did. And and I'll I'll close with saying this. This pool right here could not be more biblical. This could not be more scriptural. We do a study in Canal Ministry Training Center about the Jewish mikvah. Anybody ever heard the word mikvah? Okay, all the Canal students have heard the word mikvah. Guys, this dates all the way back really to Genesis chapter 1. Water has always been around. It's always been around. In Genesis 1, 1, the Bible ta- in Genesis 1, the Bible talks about that the Holy Spirit hovered over the what? Water. And the Bible says that he hovered over the water. It is where we get the, the English, the definition of the word hovering in the Hebrew is actually he brooded over the water. Like a hen does her chicks. Well, what does that look like? Well, if you understand the Hebrew language, you'll understand that it's very pictorial and it's very full. So when you learn how to break down some Hebrew, you will see that the Holy Spirit was over that water that was chaotic and just like a hen over her chicks, very protective, watching every move, watching every, uh, every change, not moving far from those little chicks. And the Holy Spirit did not move far from that water as he waited for God the Father to give the command of creation and God the Son went and created and yes by the way Jesus was the one that did the creating because the Bible says that he created all things everything is created by him and for him you see Jesus didn't just show up in Matthew one day he was in eternity past and you'll learn about that in Caneo so these waters date all the way back You move it all the way up to the New Testament, the Essenes. It's believed that John the Baptist was an Essene. That was one of the people groups. You'll learn about that in Canaan. It's one of the people groups in that day. As an Essene, they would have baptized at least three times a day. And they self-immersed. And they baptized forward. Did you know that? Amen? Amen? Josephus, the Roman, uh, the Roman um, historian, he was, had Jewish blood in him and he was also a Roman citizen, had no skin in the fight. He was just a historian. He was just going to write about what he saw. Josephus, you'll learn about him in Caneo. He wrote about what he saw and he would see the Christians baptizing, self-immersing three times a day. This couldn't be more scriptural. Well, I'm not an Essene and I don't have Jewish roots. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Your Savior was a Jew. If you are of Abraham, you are a true Jew. And what does that mean? Oh, well, you'll learn about that in blood covenant. So I just want to encourage you, registration is going to be open as soon as I get back to Dawsonville to you guys because all of our online campuses are doing registration right now in the month of April. Don't miss registration. I don't want to go to class. Let me tell you what's going to happen. We're going to die one day and we're going to stand before Jesus. And all you folks in this community, not just this church, but this whole community, Pastor Sue, all the people in this community, Jesus is going to say, all you people that live near Marion, Kentucky, near that Canal campus, y'all come stand right here. And he's going to say, why did you not go and get discipled and develop as a Talmud? And you'll learn what that is when you had the opportunity. Because he's looking for disciples. He's not looking for people that follow him from afar. 
We all want to be in the inner circle, but we want to do what it, gets, what it needs to be done to get in the inner circle. And he has all of eternity to hear your answer. You'll have all of eternity to tell him why I didn't want to train as a disciple. He'll have all of eternity. Well, Pastor Sue badgered me. Well, you should have listened to her. Because now you got to tell Jesus why he was not important enough to study. Amen? And that's just as simple as it is. Okay? Well, she's mad. No, I'm not mad. I'm passionate. I'm passionate about him. And when you finish Caneo, you will love him more than you do today. You're going to love him more. I will make you love him more. Because I'm going to show you some stuff that you're going to say, had I known that 10 years ago, I would not have walked through all this stuff, got in my cycles, and now my cycles have cycles. Because when you realize how much he loves you, you will want to serve him, and you'll want to love him back. Amen? Amen. God bless you.